Debbie McCarthy, who is the executive director of the Augustine Project, which is sponsored out of Holy Family Church in Chapel Hill. Debbie, welcome. In 1994, Linda McDonough had a vision and an idea. It was a vision about helping children learn to read and write. And that vision led to the Augustine Project, sometimes called Augustine. Either way. Debbie, welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the project exists to teach reading, writing, and spelling to low-income children who are struggling with those literacy skills. And there's a tremendous need for this kind of instruction. Um, not every child learns to read successfully in school. Many need one-on-one -on -one intervention. And that's what we provide with highly trained volunteer tutors who make a long-term commitment to meet with that child at the school at least twice a week for at least 60 hours and they undergo rigorous training before being paired with the child and they use a research-based methodology that works and is proven to work and um, has made a real difference in the lives of thousands of children in the state. It really has been thousands of children over the years. It really has. We've trained um, <coughs> almost 600 tutors in the triangle alone and there are other chapters in other cities. We have a replication at St. Peter's Church in Charlotte, at St. Paul's Church in Winston-Salem, and then there are other replications beyond the diocese in Hickory, Fayetteville, Greenville, South Carolina, and Houston, Texas. It's reading, writing, and spelling. Exactly. Why is that important? That's important because that's the foundation of success in school, as we know, and to a certain extent, success in life beyond the classroom. Uh, the statistics are pretty shocking for those children who are not successful in learning to read. We know that many children who feel uncomfortable and frustrated and humiliated by not being able to read are going to drop out of school. And it then follows that those children are unable to secure jobs and many of them end up in criminal activity. 85% of all juvenile offenders have some sort of reading disability and the, the prisons are literally filled with non-readers. So we are trying to prevent that problem by intervening with these children one-on-one -on -one, um, at a young age. The program provides both training and supervision for the tutors. Absolutely. The training is rigorous. It takes two weeks. It's a 70-hour commitment. Uh, we meet Monday through Friday from 9 to 4 for two consecutive weeks. But during those two weeks, uh, the trainee is taught how to teach a person to read. It's a pretty amazing skill to acquire in two weeks' time. It includes a practicum, so each trainee leaves having taught five supervised lessons. They know how to do it because they have done it. And then they're supported throughout their tutoring year. We meet monthly for lunch bunch meetings. We have an ongoing resource library. We invite our tutors to uh, come to continuing education workshops. So there is support beyond the initial two-week training. So someone like me who wouldn't have the foggiest idea how to teach someone to read can actually learn how to do it. Absolutely. We've trained everyone from retired teachers, who of course are naturals at this. We've trained nurses. We've trained business executives. Uh, we've trained stay-at-home moms. We train anyone, regardless of their own educational background. You don't have to be a college graduate to take our training. In fact, we have a very successful program in place where we are training high school seniors at Durham Academy and at Trinity School to work with children at a nearby elementary school. And those high school seniors are some of the best tutors I've ever seen. And you've recently received a grant from the Jesse Ball DuPont Foundation to expand this work and replicate it throughout the diocese. Absolutely, and we are so grateful for that and so excited about the possibilities of expansion. Um, we've already been contacted by several other parishes in the diocese, and one thing that I hope people will, will take from this opportunity, this video, is to contact the Augustine Project if they are interested in creating the same situation in their parish or their community. Um, and we're going to have a workshop. That's right to that effect. Starting on March the 26th, it's a Friday, we'll be meeting at Holy Family, uh, 11 to 2, serving lunch. There's no charge, so anyone in the diocese who's interested in learning how we do our work 
and how they might replicate it in their community is more than welcome to attend. And you don't have to be an Episcopalian to participate? No, indeed. No, indeed. We invite anyone and everyone. Uh, and it's worth noting, I think, that our curriculum is purely secular. We are not uh, providing religious instruction. We are, after all, working in the public schools, so we need to keep that distinction. But for those of us who work in the project, it's very much a sacred work. It's very much a calling. And as I've said before, when I observe tutors with their children or when I teach a child in the Augustine Project, I very much feel that I'm standing on holy ground. There's a little story I want you to tell very quickly that tells where the name comes from. The Augustine Project was named by a parishioner at Holy Family back in the beginning. Her name was Laura Brown, and Laura had the recollection that when St. Augustine wrote his confessions, he described the story of his conversion. He was sitting in a garden at a friend's home, and he heard voices, which he described as sounding like the voices of children, playing a game, kind of sing-songy voice, and they were saying, take up and read, take up and read. So he picked up a scroll which contained, I think, the Epistle to the Romans from St. Paul. It had such an impact on his life that he gave up his profligate ways and went and studied with Ambrose and became maybe the greatest theologian of the church. Take up and read. Take up and read. If you want to help out with this ministry and participate in it, the contact information is included with this edition of Please Note. Debbie, thank you, and God bless you in this work. Thank you very much. Keep the faith.